Welcome to episode 194 of G.I. Joburg. Today, I, Robert, am joined by... Nobody. That's right, guys. It is Rob on Rob. Or, as uh, Paul has titled the episode, Scoop Scoop. Or, as I have titled the episode, What Would Rob Say? So tonight, or today, whenever it is that you're choosing to listen to this podcast or watch it on YouTube or wherever you decide to ingest it or digest it, whatever the term is, <laughs> uh, you'll be listening to me for the next uh, 30 to 40, 50 an hour maybe. Depends on how, how slow or how fast I talk without uh, other people constantly interrupting. <laughs> nah guys, love having you on. You're the best. Um, so today I'm going to go through a bunch of questions um, that people have submitted uh, for me specifically uh, since I haven't been around for a while and I'm going to go through them as a, a bit of a post box to put to get through as well, some voice messages from a couple of people, um, yeah, so let's dive right in here. Um, first section that we're going to go through is new shirt, new shirt, new shirt, new stuff, if you're worried about your kids listening. Um, I still haven't got any new stuff. <laughs> um, over the past year or so since COVID began, the postal service here hasn't been the most trustworthy um, companion for the collector in the country. Um, and I have never tried buying anything off our local site called Bid or Buy. It seems Stephen and Paul have had good luck with it. Uh, I just started looking today at a couple of things to see because I'm in the process of maybe making some stories, some videos and things that I want to do coming up, especially in response to a couple of the questions that uh, have been posed to me. Yeah, so soon there will be new shit, hopefully in the next two months or so. Um, but there is something really cool coming up that I'm quite excited for. Uh, it's not G.I. Joe, but it is Transformers related, and considering Transformers and G.I. Joe have been intermingling since as early as 1987, I think I think it still counts. So I was trawling the internet, and I discovered that the Masterpiece lineup from Transformers will soon be getting a Skids figure. Skids maybe isn't the most exciting character to most people, but he was one of the earliest figures that I picked up um, on eBay, specifically the Transformers Collection Skids. Um, so it was probably about 2002, three, four. I mean, it came out 2004, so it couldn't have been earlier than that. So about 2004, I picked that bad boy up, um, probably because he was one of the only ones on there that I could get, and Steven had grabbed all the other really cool ones. <clears throat> but he kind of, but he kind of appealed to me because he was kind of more uh, straightforward, more undercover. I mean, if you're going to pick a car to be a robot in disguise, why not pick a ubiquitous car that everyone drives? And the type of car he was driving felt to me more like something that someone going to work or doing really exciting stuff, uh, you know, getting groceries and things. He would be able to fit in and disappear amongst all the other vehicles a lot easier than, say, a Lamborghini or a giant truck. Yeah, so Skids has always had a really close place in my heart, or to me, and this new Skids looks really fantastic. I don't know what type of car it is. I know it's a Hun Honda, Honda. <laughs> um, but he looks fantastic. He looks really good. Um, I can't tell, though, from the pictures how much of him is die-cast metal. It seems like since the last time that I looked at the Transformers Masterpiece line, they've, they've definitely added a lot more figures, but kind of the production values have gone maybe down a little bit, or maybe not production values, but they're definitely still very detailed. Uh, there's a lot of transforming going on there, lots of cool things that open up and close. So I am excited to try and get me a Skids in the next couple of months. I believe he releases in November, so hopefully by the end of the year I'll have myself a Skids figure. Yeah, otherwise, yeah, there are a couple of things I'm looking at on our local site, trying to see if there's anything I can get there. Because I have not shopped for new figures in quite some time. Not even just COVID, but pre-COVID as well. And the shipping rates are really scary. I mean, you're buying something 
that costs a certain amount of money, and then the shipping seems to, on average, be three times that amount. Hopefully, that means that you're getting three times the amount of protection for your figure, or whatever you're buying. Um, probably not, I'm guessing. So there are a couple of things I'm looking at as I slowly but surely become more active and more creative again, joining, rejoining the G.I. Joburg pursuit for excellence and fun and all the other great stuff that we get up to. Yeah, so without further ado, let me just start diving into these questions um, that people have submitted and hopefully explore a couple of things, enlighten you on, on ways that I think about things and uh, and... Hopefully by the end of this episode, you're not sick of me and you're like, Rob, go away again, please. <laughs> well, if you really enjoy this, I can probably do another one of these at some point as well. Um, okay, so first up, we have actually a, a question from Steve. He, uh, It's a burning question that he needs to know my answer to. So Steve asked, Early Joe vehicles with canopy glass tended to have unpainted frames to make the joins between panels, like the Rattler, Sky Striker, Dragonfly. How do you suppose the Snowcat and Havoc canopies work then? All those hard edges, but no frame. That is a very good question. I mean, compared to the earlier vehicles, where it was really quite obvious these are panes of glass, when you look at especially the, the Snowcat and the Havoc, um, these are edged pieces of glass where you'd assume that they're, they're connected somehow at those edges, but it's not apparent at all. And the snowcat at least looks like hardened glass or something like that it would stand up to some sort of beating from, you know, enemy fire. But um, so what I was thinking along the lines with um, was first, let's check the blueprints. Is there any um, indication as to what, this is that makes it, uh, they were able to mold it into these shapes. Unfortunately, there was really no go, there was no information there, um, except on the Havoc itself, there was a reference to impact resistant canopy, um, but no evidence as to like, what did they make this out of? So I started thinking a bit more about other shows and, and universes where I've seen kind of like uh, space vehicles and other things that have canopies see-through glass or apparently glass. And probably the most prominent example that I can think of is transparent aluminum, um, which was uh, featured prominently in Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home, where the original crew goes back to the 80s and has to bring forward into time or into their time uh, a couple of whales to communicate with a vessel from space and that is in the process of coming to Earth and probably going to destroy it if they don't talk to the whales. So yeah, keep the environment safe, guys. Save the whales and all the other creatures. They're very important to the future survival of humanity and uh, the Federation. Yeah, so transparent aluminum, which is basically then aluminum, but it's transparent. So it looks like glass, but it's exceptionally hardened, would be my explanation for what they're possibly using for the snowcat and the havoc's canopies and originally yes it was completely uh, science fiction it was not a real thing but over the last couple of years uh, especially with a lot of star trek stuff and sci-fi stuff where people come up with um, fantastical solutions to things um, which is completely not based in reality the idea of transparent aluminum is actually becoming a reality or it has been for the last couple of years um there are two types of um, transparent aluminum that they have been developing. Um, one is called aluminum magnesium, um, which is apparently, it's quite sturdy, it, but it's not very see-through. So that's more likely the snow cat canopy. <laughs> um, and then alongside that, they've also developed something called aluminum oxynitride, um, which is way stronger than aluminum magnesium and a lot clearer. Apparently, there's a company that is uh, able to produce these transparent uh, panels that you could use in vehicles and in, I suppose, fish tanks like they did in Star Trek IV. But it's exceptionally expensive, like 100 times more expensive than it would be just to, you know, fit uh, bulletproof glass or whatever they, you know, reinforced glass that they usually use in these types of vehicles. But you could probably mold it a lot easier into the shapes that you need to make the canopies for uh, vehicles like the Snowcat and the Havoc. 
yeah, so I think that's probably what's going on here. Transparent aluminum or some sort of uh, equivalent in the G.I. Joe universe. Where it seems, I mean, there's a lot of sci-fi elements to it, and they probably are ahead of their times in a, in a lot of things compared to what we have, you know, in where we are. Cool. So next up, we have a question from Zazzle. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Zazzle Logan Phoenix. Does Rob consider Scoop an ex-Cobra as seen in Operation Dragonfire? Well, my introduction to Operation Dragonfire was very late. I think the first time I watched it was when we... Actually, it, pro it probably wasn't, but one of the first times I watched it was for the episode that we did when we discussed Operation Dragonfire in our five-part uh, animated uh, extravaganza end of year thing that we when we actually had multi-part animated stories to discuss so um my earlier uh, interactions with scoop i had always seen him as a gi joe i'd never thought of him as an ex cobra um up to that point but it's a cool it's a cool idea though to in integrate that into his life story that he you know he kind of went through his studies uh it was all probably paid for by Cobra as they tried to obviously get him ready to work for them uh, within their ranks. They needed certain specialities that, and he had certain interests that aligned with that and they got him into their, their ranks. Um, so yeah, it, initially, no. So for most of my life, I didn't consider him an ex-Cobra, ex but I do like the idea that he is an ex-Cobra. And it's really cool that they featured, I mean, such a, so his third or fourth tier character, I mean, he was hardly in the comic books, but it's really cool that they chose Scoop as, as the focus of that entire storyline. And it definitely gives something extra to his character, which I think makes him more interesting. He's kind of like the, uh, the journalist Mercer, essentially, <laughs> if I can say that. Next up, we have a question from Bart Simon. Hey Bart, hope you're doing well. And yeah, hopefully one day we'll be able to have more drinks with you uh, in the States once this all blows over. I think that would be fantastic. And hopefully before our visas run out. Um, the original process for getting our visas was pretty easy and I imagine renewing them is quite easy as well. But uh, it's still a process to have to go to the, the Fort Knox here in, in Cape Town and obviously talk to someone and tell them, yeah, I want to go to the States again so I can have beers with my G.I. Joe friends. Um, but I'm getting distracted. <laughs> Back on point. Bart's question is, say Scoop gets blasted. He's KIA. Who's your backup favorite Joe? So, yeah, obviously my love for Scoop is boundless. <laughs> He's definitely my favorite character. Um, but... I definitely also did play with a lot of other figures when we, when Steve and I were growing up. Um, and I do have a couple of other favorites. I think obvious ones would be Snake Eyes. Snake Eyes is probably everyone's favorite. Um, another favorite would be Ripcord, Scarlet, and Flint. But probably my backup scoop, as it were, would be Dial Tone. Um, Dial Tone was also a fairly early figure that I got. And he kind of is in a similar vein to Scoop, I, I suppose you could say. He he isn't necessarily a, a, a frontline soldier. That's not his, his, his definite purpose. He's a support character with his, and he has to be able to keep communications open back for base. Um, so he's kind of like the radio equivalent, I suppose you could say, of Scoop. <laughs> um, and he always looked really cool to me. Like he had a really cool color scheme. He had the, the, the black, the black and the green. He had a cool, kind of like a fancy shirt under that. Um, and I like that his shirts were not rolled up. So he kind of looked like you could use him in any weather. And he had those cool gloves. And something I never realized, um, uh, his gun is really cool. But I, but looking on yojo.com, it's actually apparently a submachine pistol with silencer. So I suppose it's kind of built in there. And that's kind of cool. And discovering that now. And also makes him even more similar to Scoop because Scoop also has a silenced weapon. That's his main weapon that he comes with. Keep people quiet. So Scoop keeps people quiet while he's trying to film and Dalton silences people when he needs to report back to base. Keep it down, Cobra. I'm trying to have a conversation with my commanding officer here. Okay, Hawk, what are you saying? <laughs> 
And also the fact that he has a built-in mic into his backpack is very practical and it makes it very tough to lose. So you will be able to complete a Dalton figure, I think, a lot easier than you would a Scoop figure. So next up, we have a question from Robert Kalupatan. So what have you been up to this past year when you've been off the grid? What have you been doing that took your time and how are you doing in pandemic times before getting back home at G.I. Joburg? Thanks, Robert. That's actually a cool question. Uh, I think I, I talked briefly about this. I was asked on episode before. Um, yeah, so I didn't get up to much. I think initially when those first two months came up when we were in full lockdown, couldn't go to work, couldn't do anything, you're at home. Uh, I just did a lot of sleeping, a lot, a lot of sleeping and, and also adjusting to wearing a mask. I think the first couple of times I went out to get groceries, I could, because I live at the top of a hill and I have to walk down the hill and walk back up the hill again uh, with groceries. It was, it was a very difficult adjustment and I didn't have to wear the mask that often. Um, yeah, so initially it was very difficult. I found it tough to breathe in the mask, but over time I've got this gone a lot easier and I have several different masks now with, with different kind of like ways you can wear them. Uh, and yeah, it's it's been a, a slow process adjusting to wearing a mask on a daily basis. Um, so practically it's it's been a, an adjustment. Um, I played a bunch of video games. Uh, I enjoy playing video games. Uh, probably the main ones I played is one called Slay the Spire, which is kind of like a roguelite uh, card building game where you kind of go up a tower, you're fighting bad guys. Um, another one called Valheim, which is fairly recent, which is kind of like a Viking themed Minecraft, as it were, where, where the boss is to beat and as you beat them, you unlock higher tiers of uh, crafting materials and you can build really cool looking bases. Uh, in the game. Hades is another one I, I, I got into. It's a really cool Greek themed, uh, also rogue type game, a game where you, you know you die and you kind of go through the game again. With lots of cool unlockables, uh, incredible voice acting and game design. Um, I'm sure Paul, this is one Paul would, uh, would love to play if he isn't playing it already. He definitely should. So Paul, pick up Hades. Um, Stardew Valley is another game I played. It's kind of like a, you own a farm and you've got a basically farm. <laughs> uh, Loop Hero is another game I, I started recently. Uh, Apex and Fortnite are two multiplayer games I've played a bit of. Uh, and playing games are a lot easier recently because at the start of the year or a couple of months ago, I finally got fiber installed and my internet is definitely a lot more stable and it makes it a lot easier to kind of be online and interact with people and yeah, just, just have fun online. Uh, other practical, boring stuff I got up to, I, I made some progress in sorting through my things, um, trying to make proper space for my G.I. Joe toys in my room, which is very difficult because I, I own way too many books, way too many graphic novels and way too many comic books. So I am slowly going through the process of paring everything down until I just have the essentials because a lot, probably 75% of what I own is actually not even in my room. <laughs> Uh, which is probably why I've never chosen to do a uh, what does Rob's toy collection look like? Because yeah, it's it's a mess. It's it's not in it's not displayed in, in, in a really nice way. Initially, I kind of it felt like it was a pause. This this suddenly going to COVID, going to lockdown, and it felt like a pause from regular life um, until eventually the pause kind of became more of a, a complete halt for me at least. Um, something I probably don't talk about a lot and you know kind of get I suppose more uh, downer, I, I don't know. I, I tend to suffer from, from depression a lot and this whole situation kind of made me exceptionally depressed. The changes, the constantly thinking about my family members, like are they all okay? Are they gonna get through this? Um, are they getting infected? Like, how is this affecting everyone? And it's, yeah, it made it really difficult. And often when things get difficult, I tend to cut ties with people and I kind of go inwards. And uh, it's probably not the best thing to do. It's always better to have a group of people around you to support you and get you through things. But I tend to kind of go, I need to take care of myself. I need to get through this on my own. And 
yeah, uh, once again, it proved not to be the the, the right choice. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I essentially kind of shut down. I, I paused and, but with the months dragging on, kind of realized like this is the new new for now and you can't do nothing forever. So I finally, I finally got back in touch with the guys and I was like, yeah, let's just do it. You know, sometimes the impetus to do something comes after you start doing it. Um, at least that's how, that's how I've always found it. And sometimes you just got to force yourself to do something. And once you're doing it, you're back into it. You're, you're, you're enjoying yourself again. And you can't even remember why you decided to stop in the first place. So yeah, I just kind of, I was just like, let's just do it. Let's stop thinking, stop overthinking, get back into it. Yeah. So it was a very tough year. I'd have to say for me. Um, but I am, I'm feeling a much better now. I wouldn't say a hundred percent. I don't think I'm ever a hundred percent, but I am feeling like there are possibilities. There's hope, there's creativity. You can do things, you can make, make a difference for yourself and for others. Um, even if it's a small thing, like, like being on a podcast and chatting with people, hopefully bringing a little bit of light in someone's life. And yeah, definitely the love from everyone when I came back was definitely a, <laughs> was a, a, a big positive. It was, it was fantastic. I appreciate everyone who sent messages, who said, you know, were worried about me and I'm so glad that everyone is so happy to have me back. So yeah, thanks Rob for, um, for, for, uh, getting me to, uh, talk about that. Um, yeah, hopefully I won't do this again. We'll see. <laughs> um, but yeah, cool. So the next question is from Cody Skilf. I probably mispronounced that, but it's from Cody. And he asks, how does Rob think Scoop having a master's degree in electrical engineering plays a part in his role on the Joe team? I think it's fantastic. Um, I think he's definitely a support character on the team. He's not a mainline guy. I mean, yes, he's there on the main lines, but he's supporting the other characters as they kind of, you know, do the missions and things. And the interesting thing with electrical engineering is that it covers a lot of fields. Um, it's a very broad uh, spectrum, or it's a very broad term to cover stuff like computer engineering, systems engineering, telecommunications, signal processing, electronics, optics, and a lot more. His secondary military specialty probably gives us a idea of what his focus is and where he would kind of fit more into helping with the GI Joe team. And his, uh, his SMS is microwave transmission specialist. Um, so that kind of suggests that his focus is most likely going to be telecommunications and signal processing, probably a bit of computer engineering, you know, cause you've got to be able to kind of fix your equipment when you're out in the middle of nowhere fighting Cobra. So I think that'll probably allow him to better process his footage and get it to where it needs to go. And he probably works quite closely, say, with people like Dalton and, uh, and the other technical guys on the team, so like Mainframe. Probably helps to keep the communications equipment running smoothly and keeping, you know, everyone in, in communication with everyone else, kind of keeping everything smoothly running and going. And yes, he's always filming, but he's always there as a kind of like backup to the support guys, like, oh, I'm struggling with my, my communications backpack. Like, I can't get through. And it's like, okay, you got, I got this. You keep shooting. I'll, I'll figure this out. <laughs> yeah. So I think definitely he's a big help in um, keeping things fixed and working in the field. Um, and probably on base, he'd probably help out a lot with that sort of support stuff as well. So. We have two questions now, which I'm, I'm kind of going to roll into one um, and just talk briefly about um, and they're kind of like more creative questions, which I will uh, touch on now and uh, expand on uh, probably at a later point. So the first question is from Rachel, Rachel and Carlos Salinas. They ask, can you come up with a scenario where Ice Cream Soldier and Scoop get a special mission assignment so we can get a story called Operation Ice Cream Scoop? <laughs> <laughs> Um, 
And the, the other question is from Pablo Ocampo, who asks, could you give us an example of Scoop's voiceover narration of the battlefield and the scoop of the situation? Um, yeah, so Rachel, Carlos, and Pablo, you have kind of hit on where I'm kind of going, where I, at some point, I'm writing out the story now, I'm coming up with stuff. Um, for quite a while, I wanted to do a scoop video, we'll play motion for our, our YouTube channel. And I think definitely with the with Pablo's idea of scoops of voiceover narration of the battlefield is kind of where I was going when I was thinking about like, uh, what is a cool, unique perspective that you can have in a scoop based play motion storyline. And it would be from his perspective, you kind of see down the, the camera barrel as it were. Uh, he's, he's talking about what's going on. He's relaying that information back to base. Um, and yeah, I think we could we could definitely call it Operation Ice Cream Scoop. <laughs> and that kind of ties in, um, Rachel and Carlos, with my hunting on the internet right now on eBay and on and our local site, Buddha Buy, for an ice cream soldier. Um, I don't think I ever thought to own an ice cream soldier. He's kind of, he's very orange, um, which now that I've kind of read up a bit more about him, that he's a flamethrower expert could be quite cool to have and could be could, could tie in quite nicely with a kind of like scoop storyline where he's teamed up with with uh, ice cream soldier and they they kind of have to get something done that the last two and yeah so you're gonna have to wait a little bit longer for me to answer your questions properly pablo uh rachel and carlos but i am in the process of creating a play motion storyline which hopefully i'll do in the next couple of months so I'm going to put a pin in these questions and I will answer them with an actual video. And knowing that you guys are out there waiting for me to do this thing will make me want to finish it and get it out there for you. <laughs> so yeah, expect Operation Ice Cream Scoop at some point once I own Ice Cream Soldier and uh, yeah, once I get out there and start filming. It's definitely something that I've been considering since I've come back that I need to get something out onto the YouTube channel, um, kind of featuring Scoop and his perspective on things. And yeah, knowing that you guys want to see something like that um, will give me the, the kick in the butt as it were to get it out there and do it. So watch the space. Next up, we have a question from Outback Stew. If you could be your own superhero, what kind of powers would the Rob have? And what would be your name? So yeah, I'm a big fan of superheroes and superheroics. Um, obviously been collecting comic books for most of my life, uh, mainly DC, some Marvel. Um, a big fan of all the movies, well, most of them. <laughs> um, and I think for a long time, probably my favorite superpower or superpower would either have been uh, telekinesis or flight. Um, those are two really cool abilities to have. But over the last couple of years, whenever I kind of think of superheroics, I think teleportation, you know, something like uh, what Nightcrawler does or, uh, you know, some other superheroes do is way more useful and way more practical. Um, with teleportation, you can, you can serve as the transport for your team. You can get your entire team somewhere a lot faster, which means you'll be able to react a lot quicker to situations as they develop. Um, and it's great for like downtime as well. Um, you can travel the entire world with teleportation. Um, for myself in the real world, I love to be able to teleport. I can have, you know, beers with Bart every weekend if I wanted to. <laughs> I could visit Stephen in Australia before 2032 uh, when he comes back to Cape, you know, Cape Town. Uh, I could go to Joburg. Me and Paul could uh, knock out a, a Gundam figure together. He can teach me how to paint properly. Um, but as a superhero, I think teleportation has a lot of applications, not just transport, um, but you can teleport yourself. I, I'd imagine you can teleport objects, you can drop, drop stuff on the enemies, um, and also you can attack from unexpected angles. Uh, teleportation, I think, is a very useful ability to have, and that's the one that my superhero would have. Um, as for a name for the superhero, I was thinking either sidestep or strafe. So, kind of building on the idea of moving out of the way of what is coming at you uh, and 
kind of attacking from an unexpected angle of being being just unexpected <laughs> not unexpected but uh unpredictable so sidestepping sidestep or strafe i think strafe is probably cooler you kind of move out of the way of what's coming but you kind of you're attacking you're able to parry and come back at your enemy quicker than they can respond there's definitely been a lot of cool uses of teleportation but i think you can do a lot more with it next up we have a question from gary viola what sub team should scoop join or was regretfully left off of well gary i would probably say all of them <laughs> I would say the scoop had to be on every single sub team. You always need scoop on a mission. Um, I think Bart suggested Tiger Force. I mean, he definitely looks appropriate. <laughs> he would he would for sure fit on, on Tiger Force. I mean, for goodness sake, they put Dusty on Tiger Force. And I don't know, the Dusty, the coloring of Dusty looks a bit weird to me at least. I was looking at it today, the kind of like weird green stripes on him. And I was like, yeah, you guys could have done better. You could have just pop scooping in there. Um, missed opportunity. Um, probably another cool scoop could be Night Force. Cool kind of like more gray, more um, black and gray outfit for scoop. Um, could have been really cool. Um, and maybe Star Brigade, actually. A cool space-based scoop. I mean, he'd get some incredible footage out there in space. He could be the next George Lucas, even. I mean, that would be pretty awesome. So, yeah, definitely uh, Tiger Force would be uh, kind of like the funny pick. Um, Night Force or Star Brigade would be two really good options. Um, and coming off that question, um, we had a question from Magnus Lauglo. Magnus asked, what makes Scoop awesome? And if Scoop were to come in a recolor or general redesign, what would I suggest? So I think what makes Scoop awesome is that he suggests a lot more than just being a G.I. Joe, not just being a soldier. He Scoop as a member of the G.I. Joe team. He's not just a soldier. He's a he's a filmography. You know, he kind of suggests a much bigger world than just the soldiers themselves. So you can kind of Yes, a lot of kids can kind of aspire to be a soldier, and you can definitely see that in a lot of different G.I. Joes, joining the military, you know, because you want to be like Duke, becoming a ninja, because <laughs> you really like Scarlet. Um, but I think Scoop's inclusion in the team suggests a much wider world as well. Filmmaking, journalism, the importance of reporting what is seen and what is done on the battlefield. To have a record of it and i think it's a very it's a noble profession or it should be a noble noble profession uh journalism kind of reporting the truth showing you what's happening um so that the people at home can decide for themselves or you know the people in charge can see what's going on and decide what needs to be done next based off uh fairly objective filming <laughs> i mean considering he is on the gi joe team is a, a certain bias, but still, um, yeah. And Izuhu was one of my first figures, so that also makes him awesome. And I, I've always liked the look of him. He's very, it's pared down. It's not too hectic. It's not too over the top. Um, he looks pretty straightforward. He's too yellow. Some people I think have suggested he's too yellow, but I don't think so. It's more like an egg yolky kind of like. Uh, not too bright yellow and I yeah I just like the look of him the equipment he has on him his little pistol on his ankle he has the little like radio thing on his wrist and all the extra equipment he comes with he's just there's more to him than just being a soldier and I think that's what I like about him he as a figure already suggests more beyond just being someone who's battling Cobra and I think I've I've always enjoyed that about him. Um, and Magnus, how would I modernize him? I don't think you should do a lot of modernizing. I mean, he really has all of the stuff he kind of needs on him. Uh, I suppose you could kind of miniaturize his camera, uh, mount it onto his helmet, so he's kind of he's more hands free. You can you can kind of 
attack a lot easier. Already he has the, the control panel on his left wrist. So you could actually equip him with camera drones. So you could kind of have, uh, modernize his backpack to have drones that um, could actually film the entire battlefield from multiple angles. Um, and you wouldn't have to do much with the figure himself. I think he's pretty cool just the way he is. Um, I would just modernize his equipment. I think giving him kind of like uh, f drones that can film things would definitely give him more options into what he's seeing on the battlefield and, and what he can relate back to base, you know, for more information that they ca that can be used to kind of like move the battlefield forward and win the day for G.I. Joe. Next up, we have a question from Snowcat Ron, who shared a picture of Scoop, which is from some sort of advertising uh, for the figure, um, probably in a magazine or something when he came out. And he asks, what's Scoop saying? Um, so there's a picture of, of Scoop um, with uh, two phrases. Well, I think it's the same phrase uh, in French and in Dutch. And yes, so Ron, I, I definitely won't be able to translate it from the French. I have no knowledge of French. Uh, I know that there's a movie called La Petite. Uh, Le, Le, Le Enfant Perdu. No, that's wrong. <laughs> City of Lost Children, whatever that is in French, I have sometimes remembered that phrase. It's a very good movie from the people who did uh, Amelie, the movie Amelie, which is also very good. Although I prefer City of Lost Children because it's more like uh, steampunk, um, it's darker. And it has Ron, Ron Perlman in it, and he's always cool. Um, yeah, so I won't be able to translate what, what he's possibly saying in French, but I can give the, the Dutch a shot. <clears throat> And I'm, I'm going to say it out loud. I'm going to try and translate it. It's probably going to sound terrible, but you can let me know if I if I did a good job of translating this. Um, and yeah, um, having this African background does give me an easier time of translating Dutch because Dutch is similar in a way to Afrikaans, which is a language here in South Africa. Um, yeah, so let's give it a shot. Verleden jaar ben ik uitgeroepen tot de grootste specialist de wereld in zakken waarneming en beruchtgeving. <laughs> so I imagine that probably means he was called out to join the team. He was, he was chosen because for many years he's been one of the top best uh, specialists in reporting and information gathering. That's what I imagine that says. Let me know if I'm right or wrong. <laughs> it goes on to say, Ik moet die titel blijven verdienen. I have to earn that title. I have to earn that title. Or I have to prove that I am that good. In ieder geval, als ik niet film, ruffel ik nogal eens op die stumperts, stumperts van cobras. Uh, either way, whatever I film, I have to still beat down the Cobra. <laughs> so, so I can't translate it directly, but the general idea I'm getting from it is that he's been recognized as one of the top journalists and information gatherers in the world. He has to live up to that title, um, whether or not people believe it or not. Uh, either way, he's going to be out there filming and he's going to put Cobra in their place. Ron, please let me know how close I was um, and how hilarious my speaking of Dutch is. <laughs> it probably wasn't very good because my Afrikaans, even though I studied Afrikaans for 12 years in school, um, I hardly remember it. Um, and I I hardly use it these days actually in my day-to-day -day life yeah so thanks for for sharing that um i hope i i did it some justice and please let me know what it actually means <laughs> um next up we have a question from ryan sweeney who asks which youtube review or play motion 
that you guys have done is your favorite. So I have, I mean, I, I'm quite proud of everything we've done, whether I've been directly involved in it um, or, or not. I think our channel, I mean, is, is, a, is a pretty good one overall. I mean, we put out tons of different stuff over the years. Um, it's definitely a lot of fun to watch. Um, I, I enjoy re-watching stuff that we've done and even watching stuff that I've never worked on. Um, but probably one of my favorites is um, Bad Luck Lady. I enjoyed that little mini series that Steven did. Um, I got to help out a little bit near the end when he came back to Cape Town. Um, but I enjoyed how tight that story was and, and kind of like the camera stuff that he, 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 he got done, the kind of like the angles and stuff, the shots that he was able to do. I think definitely over time, Steven's got really good at editing um, and, and his eye for stuff is really fantastic. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed Bad Luck Lady. Um, a cool one-shot one, and probably one of our earlier ones. Um, probably one of the, the favorites of a lot of people is Graduation Day. Um, we managed to knock that out in one day, I think it was. Um, and it's just a cool little story, just, you know, Sergeant Slaughter kind of like teaching the new recruits how to do stuff, and suddenly they have to actually be the soldiers who, who win the day for G.I. Joe, unexpectedly. And that was definitely a lot of fun to to work on and do. Um, probably one of, a, a guilty pleasure or at least a favorite because it features one of my toys because not many of our reviews are, well, I don't own a lot of toys, at least vehicles compared to Steven's. So we haven't done many reviews um, that would have featured my vehicles. Uh, it would be the Cobra Hurricane review. I, I enjoy what we did with the vehicle. It kind of features it. It shows it off really well. Um, yeah, I, I really, it's probably one of my favorite reviews. Um, and something that um, I watched over the last year, which I thought was really cool, was a uh, Terror Block by Cobra Lang, uh, which I thought was pretty dope stop motion. I see um, stop motion is still growing, it's still good, it's still interesting to watch. And it's a cool uh, com contrast to the play motion that we've, um, kind of developed and, and run with generally on our channel. Um, and so the stop motion stuff is really amazing to look at and see. So I, I definitely enjoyed watching Terror Block. I thought it was really cool. Next up, we have a question from Matt Littleboy, who asks, favorite Cobra operative or scoop ultimate enemy? Wow. So I think probably scoops ultimate enemy on the, on the Cobra team would be someone who's elusive and someone who isn't easy to capture on tape. So Scoop is probably very proud of himself. He's, he's really elated and he's like, yes, I did a good job today. Um, when he manages to get someone like Zartan or Storm Shadow on tape, I think at least from a filmmaking perspective, probably they would be his ultimate enemies or is this kind of the people that he would um, be really proud of to get shots of them at the end of the day is someone who who's difficult to spot um maybe a night viper or anyone who um is hidden and would it would really help to be able to see and know that they are there where they've been that they are out there um i suppose more practically um a tele viper or a techno viper would be more his kind of counterpart on the the cobra team so maybe he has kind of like a, uh, I wouldn't even call it like a fun rivalry where kind of he compares footage that he takes to, to footage to maybe someone else on the Cobra team who, who I suppose maybe also has a YouTube channel like he does. <laughs> and he's like, oh gosh, they, they, they got such cool shots of that battle that we were in. Um, but yeah, I think for me, my favorite Cobra operative um, outside of someone who would be Scoop's ultimate enemy um, would be probably like a Night Viper. I think the Night Vipers have always looked awesome. I mean, I've, I don't think I've ever owned a Night Viper. I, I, I wouldn't mind owning one at some point. Um, but yeah, probably Night Vipers are some, some of my favorites on the, the Cobra team. I've always had a soft spot for... <sighs> Okay, so one of my, my personal favorites uh, is Targat, um, who's technically Cobra. 
Um, I've always enjoyed the look of the character. He's very straightforward. Um, his backpack is awesome to have. Um, yeah, so Target is probably another favorite uh, Cobra octave of mine. Okay, guys, so we have uh, some post box from the pit um, f to follow up from those questions. Um, with a couple more questions to go. So this is from Tommy. Post box the pit, Tommy. Hello, G.I. Joe Burke. This is my first ever message to a podcast. I really love your show. You guys are so funny, and I really enjoy your conversations about my favorite toy line. I have some questions for you guys, so here goes. If Scoop is such a great cameraman, what hasn't he... What hasn't he filmed any porn? Why? Why hasn't he filmed any porn? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think Scoop, being a journalist, he probably he wouldn't necessarily have done porn, but maybe it could have come up as an incidental thing when he's on a mission. He might catch a, a couple uh, doing something, and maybe he'll get that on tape by accident. Um, but it's probably not part of his actual mission. <laughs> Uh, Tommy continues, one of your hosts, I believe it was that deplorable man known as Paul, said the Storm Shadow figure from the original Origins line looks flopsy-wopsy. I must say, I do painfully agree. Where could I go to complain about this so that my voice is heard? I really feel I have been mis misrepresented here. Also, why is there no bow or arrows? I see we get, get an old head, but I don't know what to do with that. Must to throw it at my enemies or use it for ritual sacrifice? Please, I must have answers to these questions. Okay, so Tommy, or uh, Storm Shadow, as, this, as the email is signed off on, or by, um, I'm not sure why. Maybe he kind of has more modern stuff, or possibly a second figure in the line will come with more stuff, or more equipment. And the alt head is, is so that you can see what you look like without your, your, your mask on. At least that's the way that I, um, I interpreted it. Um, to continue with the with the email, is Shockwave's knife really a knife? As someone who knows something about knives, I think it's actually a sword. But I'd like to hear what you gentlemen think. Well, as I'm the only person in G.I. Joburg who actually owns a complete Shockwave, <laughs> I would definitely say that uh, his knife is exceptionally big. He has a ginormous knife. I mean, it's probably more like a Bowie knife. Um, or at least kind of like an upsized bowie knife, a serrated sword. Um, it is at least, it probably came out at a time when the figures had accessories that were a bit bigger than they probably were life lifelike or properly um, sized. But yeah, it, it definitely is a really big knife. I will agree with you. Uh, because usually a knife is quite small kind of like a dagger sized thing. I don't know. Hopefully the boys will be able to um, shed a little bit more extra light on this in the next episode. Um, Tommy continues to go on to say or ask, if Firefly is really a ninja, why isn't he in the ninja force? I must know because we have a bet going. Well, I think it just, I don't, at least personally, I don't think Firefly is a ninja. I think he's probably more of an explosives expert and he just happens to have maybe have got on a bit of training, or at least they, they think he is. Um, my knowledge of the law, uh, unfortunately, isn't as strong as Stevens. So hopefully he'll be able to answer that question a bit more comprehensively in the next episode. He continues to go on and say, thank you as always for the great show and videos. I love your play motion videos and I like to watch them all the time while I wear your awesome merchandise. Cheers, dude. Glad you like the shirts. I definitely own one or two. Um, I own an exclusive one that Kujo made when you were in the process of uh, uh, figuring out uh, the company that we wanted to make the shirts with. Um, yeah, very comfortable. My favorite is the Storm Shadow t-shirt and the Storm Shadow face masks. I also bought a Snake Eyes shirt that I used to polish my Ninja Lightning Cycle. <laughs> That's fantastic. I'm glad you enjoy the merch that we put out. I mean, definitely the designs are fantastic. Uh, Paul and Kujo, they designed most of the, well, all of the designs. Um, they're really good. They're, they're amazing. Hopefully, at some point, I will purchase some stuff from our store once our uh, uh, mail service works properly again. I wouldn't mind, actually mind owning a Snake Eyes or Storm Shadow face mask myself. They're all quite boring. 
So we have a follow-up email from Tommy. Hi guys, it's me again, Tommy. So I just discovered I really like chips. I'm halfway through my second bag of Doritos and I was wondering what chips do the guys at G.I. Joeberg like? Also, which G.I. Joe do you think like to eat chips? I think the bazooka guy likes them. He looks like a chips and beer guy. Yeah, um, Doritos are pretty good. Uh, I find they can be a bit dry over time. So you definitely have to have some Mountain Dew with your Doritos. Some of my favorite chips are, there's a local brand called O'Flanagan's, which are kind of like kettle fried chips. And they come in a couple of different flavors. Uh, I think chives, onions, onions and chives, or something like that <laughs> is really good. Uh, the one Lay's flavor that I quite enjoy is uh, Japanese teriyaki, I think it is, or Japanese something or other. It's a very unique flavor and I quite like it. Um, I think definitely we have to go deeper into this topic on the next episode so the other guys can answer and let you know what chips flavors they enjoy. I think as for G.I. Joe's themselves, yeah, Bazooka's probably a big chips guy. Um, barbecue probably eats a lot of chips while he's partying. He kind of needs to keep his stomach full if he's going to drink a lot of alcohol. And hopefully the guys have some more answers for you in the next episode. Tommy goes on to uh, to say, if Hasbro did it, what do you think a Ninja Force his tank would look like? I heard a rumor that Hasbro says we might get a line of O-ring style retro figures if we complain, ask for it enough. Is this true? I'm asking for a friend. Also, I'm a warrior and have fought countless battles on many a battlefield, but now cyberspace is my new battleground. I'm now also a keyboard warrior, so I will complain the hardest on the internet to make sure we get a retro line with O-ring style construction. Ninja Force, his tank, hmm. It probably just looked like a normal his tank. I mean, it's already black. I mean, that's pretty Ninja force E. But for me personally, the idea of ninja themed vehicles seems a bit silly because they're ninjas. So they kind of have, probably have to be more silent and uh, kind of get around on their own feet. So even having a Ninja Force vehicle of any sort is a bit strange. Or at least that's how I feel about it. Um, myself, I haven't heard any rumors about O-Ring style retro figures. I think that'd be really cool if they did do that, but I don't think they will because I think O-Ring construction is a lot more complicated than the type of figures that they produce these days. Um, inserting O-Ring into a figure is, I mean, that's, then you've got to have metal in there, you've got to have the plastic in there, you've got to have the O-rings in there. I think the most retro we could possibly see is just more modern figures in the kind of like four inch range. I would love it if they do more O-ring figures because then you can kind of return to the original figures, you can make them again today. Um, they're definitely a lot of figures that I still don't own that I would love to have and using modern construction or at least modern production would probably make them a lot better than the ones back in the day and also then you can refresh the figures that you already own you can have your vintage actual vintage figures and keep them fresh and keep them safe forever and you can play with all these brand new ones um so yeah i'm not sure from for myself that they are doing o-ring style retro figures but it would be really cool if they do so tommy goes on to ask Fool, that was a true question. Don't you know? Any fool can use a weapon, but an injure is a weapon. <laughs> true. I, I fell for it. I should have kept reading. I should have kept reading. This is what happens when you don't read all the way through, guys. Next up, he continues to say, Also, the new Star Wars sucks. The new Mortal Kombat movie is very unrealistic. Also, the new Evangelion dub on Netflix makes everyone say children instead of child. It's more correct, but also weird. Yeah, um, personally, I haven't enjoyed almost any of the Star Wars movies produced by Disney, except for the Rogue One, which is just a fun little story. Very well shot. I mean, the fact that it has Mads Mikkelsen in it um, is pretty cool. It's probably one of my favorite actors. It's still kind of implausible, the way that they kind of have to go around finding the Death Star plans and also ruins, I suppose, some of the expanded universe stuff that they explored in comic books previously or in books. But still, it was a, overall a fun, a genuinely fun ride. 
uh, fairly inoffensive, didn't destroy anything that came before it or after it necessarily. Um, but yeah, in general, for me, uh, for me, Star Wars hasn't been the best for quite a while. Um, I haven't seen the new Mortal Kombat movie yet. Uh, I'll let you know when I think of it once I've seen it. Evangelion, the fact that you're watching it dubbed worries me a little bit. <laughs> um, it's always better to watch anime subbed. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm a purist, but I would recommend it over watching it dubbed. Um, and then for the last little bit, uh, Tommy goes on to ask, have you seen the new The Fast and the Furious 9 trailer yet? Us cool people call it F9. I see they're going to space. That despicable and truly disgusting human being Paul says that all franchises go to space to die. Is this true? Do you like Fast and the Furious? And why not? Ah, thanks for reading my message on the podcast. Ninja Vanish, Tommy. Well, I'm glad you... Well, me, I haven't watched many Fast and the Furious movies. It's a franchise I have wanted to get into. It looks like a lot of fun. They definitely go over the top in some of those um, car stunts. I haven't watched the trailer yet. I will definitely watch it um, for the next episode where hopefully all of us will be able to go a little bit deeper into the topics you've discussed here or asked us about. So, yeah, look forward to hearing more from us, at least on on some of these topics um, that you've raised. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I'm sorry I haven't been able to answer them as fully as all three of us can, but I will definitely make sure that we talk about this more on our next episode. So other than the written messages, we also have a couple of voice notes. So the four, first voice note comes from, well, listen to it and I will, I will answer the question that he, he poses. Hello again, G.I. Joe Berg. It's me, Psych Out. I've been studying the profiles of Cobra officers and operatives, and it just blows my mind how deviant and evil those guys can be. But my question is, if you had to trust one of them, and I mean seriously trust one of them with your life, which Cobra would you trust the most? Your life could depend on it. That is a great question, Psych Out. Hopefully the rest of the boys will be able to answer in the next episode. But for me, I think probably if you had to trust someone on the Cobra team, it would probably be Destro. I think Destro in the past has proven that he has a lot of his own interests at heart and probably more so than um, Cobra centric interests. He's a businessman. And I think if you can offer him a deal, he can't refuse or at least a deal that makes sense to him. Uh, he would probably go through with it. I still don't think you can trust him, but he's probably the one guy you can approach who would, he would probably hear you out. I think so. Cool. Well, thank you psych out or Troy Smith spoilers. Um, and finally, we have a question from Storm Shadow. Hello, G.I. Joe Berg. This is Storm Shadow reminding you that a ninja is a weapon. My question for you, gentlemen, is who do you think in the G.I. Joe or Cobra forces could also have martial arts prowess. Obviously, we are ignoring the other ninjas in the line, but instead focusing on the normal grunts. I also wish to remind you that any idiot can use a weapon, but only a ninja can be a weapon. Well, thank you, Storm Shadow. Um, <laughs> that is definitely a, a good question, which I hope we can pose to everyone. Um, for myself, I think... Ah, oh, it's a tough one. I think a lot of people would probably have some sort of hand-to-hand -hand combat training, especially considering you have several of them training people in hand-to-hand -hand combat in the Joe team, at least, um, possibly in the Cobra team as well. Um, 
probably one that I would suggest is Stalker. I mean, he's had a lot of close contact with the Storm Shadow as well as Snake Eyes, and I imagine if you spend enough time with those guys, you're going to pick up at least a couple of a couple of moves, a couple of things that you feel are useful to you um, in a fight beyond just fisticuffs or using a gun. And maybe some of the kind of like the more undercover guys, maybe Chuckles, I think, might have some martial arts training. And of course, I've got to say Scoop. <laughs> Scoop is a martial arts expert. <laughs> well, I think that's about it, guys. I hope you, um, you've enjoyed this time with me. I hope I've uh, answered your questions sufficiently. Um, and it has been too boring just to listen to one guy talk to you for about an hour or so. Um, thanks to everyone for sending questions through. Uh, I really appreciated them. Um, and all the messages uh, saying you're happy to have me back uh, I appreciate it I think it's fantastic that uh, I can be back and that I'm able to be back that the guys are, you know, kind of like welcome me back with open arms and are like yeah Rob we could do this again heck yeah yo Joe Berg and as I was saying earlier Pablo, Rachel and Carlos expect an answer from me in the next couple of months i'll hopefully do a trailer or something i'll do other stuff um as i get things together and i i become creative again i can feel i feel better than i have in quite a while and i appreciate everyone who sent messages and everything else and i appreciate that i can be here and i still love gi joe and i still love being able to talk to my friends talk to myself i mean i talk to myself for an hour now um Hopefully, I won't have to talk too much in the next episode. <laughs> yeah, so thanks everyone for joining me, Robert, Rob, for episode 194, Scoop Scoop. And yeah, keep the questions coming through. I'll definitely include a comment section on this podcast on YouTube and anywhere else I can. I'm probably not the most communicative member of G.I. Joburg. But I do see what you guys say sometimes. <laughs> and yeah, um, if you enjoy us, guys, check us out on anywhere you can find the podcast. We have videos on YouTube. Um, if you like us, you can check out our merch store on Teespring. We got a lot of cool merch, as mentioned earlier, by Tommy or Storm Shadow. Um, we got a lot of cool stuff. And if you really love us, you can check us out on Patreon, where as little as $3 a month, you can sign up. Um, and yeah, get access to us when we, we generally, we have an audience when we record our podcast and uh, do a couple of other really cool stuff. Um, yeah. And to anyone who listens, anyone who just who comments, says stuff, we love all of you. And it's been an absolutely amazing opportunity to actually have an entire episode where I can just talk forever. And hopefully you enjoy this cool guys keep well keep it real and see you in the next one yo joe berg later